Get ready for an absolute banger today. What's up, everybody? It's Buffalo Ben 15 Golf back at it again. And today brings us to the Emerald Golf Course out in St. John's, Michigan. Without a doubt, one of the most well-maintained courses I have ever played. I'm dead serious when I say in all of the... Uh, courses that I've played in Central Michigan during my tenure at Bucks Run. Bucks Run's definitely my favorite, but this is an extremely close second. You guys are going to see that these greens are so tough to hold. They are so incredibly fast and so incredibly smooth and true that um, you're, you're, it'd be hard to believe that this course is even public let alone $64 for 18 and a cart. It really Just is a slight pull there. That wind got an me. incredible deal, I thought. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, I mean, they even look ridiculously fast. They even look ridiculously nice. They even got the um, yellow pins like they do at the Masters. It's that kind of same shade. Oh, 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 no. oh, that is so sad for me. <laughs> it's pretty safe to say that that was not a master's quality shot in fact it was about a one out of ten and because of that now we have a honestly a really difficult putt through the fringe here just trying to cozy this up and get out of here with a bogey and we do but gosh i mean you guys saw how short of a distance I had into this hole even after not hitting the drive the best that should have been a par if not a birdie and because of that we're already kind of behind the eight ball here with um kind of a tough kind of risk reward par four this one's definitely tougher than the last hole I'm going for it and it pays off oh yeah that was absolutely slammed Guys, that was the kind of tee shot that we've been looking for for a while. Probably 280 with rollout. Um, it was kind of a wet day. It actually rained quite a bit on me uh, coming up on this back nine. Spoiler alert. Um, but that's not a problem for now, at least. And uh, the back nine at the Emerald is definitely a little bit easier than the front nine. It's 3,200 yards as opposed to 3,400. Um, but what I will say is that the par threes on the back nine on this course are incredibly tough and uh, something that uh, is definitely going to stand in the way of me trying to score on this course. Um, I played this course three times before this round, um, I shot a 82 um, in very early season, like April 13th, 14th, whatever that weekend after Easter was. Um, but uh, I was actually doing really well that round. I had a chance to uh, break 80 on that round, actually. I was 8 over heading into 18. And then I flubbed my approach shot into the water and ended up making double. So that was kind of a let down finish, but still overall a respectable round on this tough of a course. And like we were saying before, uh, the par threes on this back nine are absolutely monsters. This is a 187 down and back up tiny green. I mean, that entry into that green is maybe 15 shot. feet wide with a bunker on the right, and oh, like I hit stopped. a really good five iron. That's a really good tee shot. Got to set my phone up on that tree. That's my favorite tree. Yeah, that tree definitely is, uh, it's nice when the course is kind of set up to uh, film for you a little bit. You don't see that every day. Uh, but yeah, absolutely beautiful par three. I mean, this is honestly my favorite hole on the course. I really do enjoy um, the aesthetics of this hole i enjoy the fact that you don't have to hit a wood off the tee but you still do have to hit a relatively long club it's kind of a a hole that can play um uh not so tough 
if the pin is in a spot where you can kind of roll it up, but a hole that can easily play to the point where you don't feel too bad about a bogey. Um, if the pin is like way on the front perch or way on this back right. Let's to save par and to stay in the lead. Beautiful stroke. That's a real test of intestinal fortitude right there. I don't think there's a better feeling when you're putting than saving a bad lag solid, putt. Solid, solid, solid three. Love it. So heading into this fourth hole, and I'm feeling really good. I'm one over through three after coming off of a extremely tough par three. Headed into probably the most tricky par four on this course. Um, it's only 385, 390 yards. It's not ridiculously long, but that second this is the kind shot. Of thing I'm talking about, even though I am in the fairway, I still have to uh, maneuver around these big old trees right in my way. So, yeah, it's not an easy shot. I was just letting my self from about a month ago speak for everybody on that one. Uh, it is just such a tough kind of placement hole. You have to hit a draw uh, against the hill that slopes down. As you can kind of see, the left side of this hole is a lot higher than the right. And um, you have about a 15-foot window where you can place your tee shot to where you don't have to punch under a tree or try to hook it around or slice it around a tree. It's just an incredibly tough kind of mid-range par four. And uh, the Emerald... Um, makes use of every inch of this terrain to make this course as tough as it can be, and which is something I really love to see. Um, courses that, you know, don't have a lot of property, don't have a lot of acreage, but just know when to just keep it the way they found it and just use it in a way like they do on 13 on this course. It's, it's awesome to see and just refreshing to see that um, just course design is just all about imagination and sometimes um, that goes beyond just leveling a bunch of land and making it cost a million dollars to keep up every year and uh, the Emerald gets it right guys they really do let's see if I can get it right on this par putt uphill of course you don't hit it even on a green that's running close to a 13, Bennett, you can't get it up that hill. Man, that's just that's just no fun. To add insult to injury, we have got a beastly 444-yard par 4 up next, the longest on the entire course. Yeah, we are all the way back there. You know... When you have a start like one over through three like I just had, you think golf's just going to be easy peasy. And then you run into adversity for like one time. And then, and, then you, and then your body, not only your mind, you can control your mind to a certain degree, but just your body, like your nerves, they just start panicking. It's crazy how well the pros handle it. Just after a bogey, looking down this hole it looks like there's no flag it's just endless uh, with a fairway like that and so what do we try to do we try to kill it and we hit it off the heel I just got to get the timing down guys my timing with my driver you saw it on bucks Slight run too it's there. just Can't do that. not where it needs to be at all might not even be past the ladies tee the ladies tees are way I don't know you can hardly see them like on a little rise in the fairway. They kind of like made a rectangular rise in the fairway. Reminds me a bit of Blackheath. Dang, it's been a long time since I've done a vlog there. You have got to be kidding me. That's me right there. I didn't even make it to the fairway. Holy crap. That's how tough that tee shot is. That is just a demanding one. So now we're in a spot that I don't think any golfer, no matter what your handicap, no matter what your scoring average hates, 
the wood you have to hit a forever distance where you can't even see the flag out of a pretty marginal lie. I mean, I did everything I could to get my body up in time, to get my chest up in time to catch that one clean, and it just was almost impossible. That's not good. That is not good. Thing is, I, I didn't want to thin squib it right like I have habitually been doing. I don't know, guys. Year. That's just one that uh, right, you try to forget. That's just a oh, shot where you just say, yeah. Not much I could have done, just the next time you have a shot where you can do a decent amount to do what you want to do, make that one work. And that's exactly what we have a chance to do here on this 75-yard sand wedge shot. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. Oh, look at that divot. Look at that flight. That's more like it, guys. I struggled mightily with that shot. Just take a look at last year green and the year before. Guys. Like, not this year guys it doesn't even look like real grass like you got a double take and is, is it like is this fake is this like astroturf or like one of those crazy plastic slash grass blends that those football stadiums sometimes use i don't know i'm definitely gonna have to ask whoever's greens keeping this because this place because whoever is deserves an award well, I suppose they did, this course did get an award last year um, for uh, their excellence and their professionalism and their accessibility, I believe is like the criteria they were based off of. Um, the MCGA course of the year, like Michigan Golf Course Association or something like that. Um, it's on their website. Um, I'll have to uh, leave a snapshot of it and like how they got it at the end of the video past me lied that's in the description but anyways guys um off to this butt here uh 15 16 feet up the hill um another one where you can be pretty aggressive at it just try to take it as straight as you can and um it's nice when you don't have to think about break because then all you have to think about is uh hitting a good stroke having a good putter stroke and uh i definitely did there just a little bit too firm and uh that is a bogey on a hole that's honestly really tough i mean after those first two shots i honestly can't be mad 64 dollars with a cart 18 holes and, and they 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 charge the same rate monday through sunday only course i've ever seen who does that this place is absolutely packed on the weekends because of it. You got to get yourself to the Emerald, guys. Unreal course. It is an unreal course, and hopefully I can post an unreal score. Gosh, how nice would it be to get a 70s round at a place like this? It's what we have a good chance to do, though, after these first five holes. We're only plus three with both par fives remaining and this is the longer of the two it's 511 though, though so it's not ridiculously long oh dude oh man that was so close to being mashed again look at this this little like abrasion in the ground it's not like a divot but like the dark part where like the grain of the grass changed because of what i hit that just turned the face over just enough to make it do that. Oh, that's that's frustrating. Hole gets a lot longer when you can't go for it in two because you have to punch out. And I tell you what, guys, that was such a well-struck ball that just got slowed down just a tiny bit just because I got a little bit too steep on the downswing and coming back up. The timing with the driver is something I've really been trying to figure out as of late. It's uh, not gone very well, as you saw in the last two episodes at Buck's Run. It was really bad, and here it's a little better, but not where I want it to be. And right now, I'm just thinking, get this to a position where you can still make birdie. I got five wood out just to make sure I don't. It's just I don't smack it into the ground, you know, because that would suck. 
I really like how I dissected this shot. And as you see, it works out incredibly well. We're just going to have a short iron into this par 5. That was super huge. I'm not, I'm not lying, guys. I wouldn't do that. Most of the time. So headed into this 8 iron now. Really accessible pin, kind of center right of the green. Another pretty small green, though. That's one thing I will also say about the emerald. The sizes of the greens vary quite a bit when it comes to um, going from one hole to the next. And as you see here, even with an excellent struck 8 iron, because of how small that green is, I just spin off that false front a little bit. And uh, now we have got a chip up the hill, which is a really straightforward chip. I shouldn't have any problems with this. Breaking a little right to left. Oh, look at that. There's the chipping we know and love from me. That was a complete one-off on hole 10. Hopefully it'll stay that way anyway, but that's more like what we're used to. And... Uh, it all goes back to that punch shot, guys. That was an incredibly well-thought-out shot by me. And um, when you don't think about all the trouble, you tend to do a lot better with your shot. Be right. Applying that as well here. Licking my chops so raw right now. Oh my gosh. This is incredible, guys. Is this, an, oh my gosh. I don't know when the last time I got a two on video was, but we got a serious, serious chance for it here. Oh my gosh, guys. Just out of a storybook, that shot. Making the drive up here. Oh my gosh. Do we gotta do it? Do we gotta do it, folks? Do we? I know you guys don't know what I'm talking about, but watch me, watch and learn. Oh my God. What the heck just happened? Is this the first ever five wood worthy on the channel? Holy cow, dude. Oh my gosh. What a shot from 210 out as the rain starting to come down. Oh my word, guys. No, we got to do it for real. We have to. It's not it's not that much of a tap in. I honestly don't know when 4-footers look longer when you've just hit an incredible shot and it's for birdie or an eagle just or when it's it for back. like triple and you you're like what? get me out of here break. personally i, do not want to I think it's break. when it's for birdie and as you see here with the cart girl watching oh, steals it away here's a It's beyond hard to watch. Oh dear, this is really, this is, um, this is so, 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 so sad. And so unnecessary. That's the most embarrassing thing I think I've ever done. The face you make when you realize your amazing shot meant absolutely nothing. In front of the god, in front of the gosh dang cart girl. I'm, I'm sorry, I gotta keep my filter on. It's trying. Oh god, the acid is boiling in my intestines. 
I want to curse so bad. If it's any consolation, this is our next hole. A converted par four that turned into a par five, as you can kind of see on the plaque, the number was like cut out and then put back in again with the five. Yeah, this hole used to be like 30 yards longer and, or, or excuse me, 30 yards shorter. And um, that's when it was a par four, but now it's a par five. So it's only 451. Let's get the birdie we should have had there. We got this guys. We got this. We're still we're still doing well. We we are. We're still in good shape, just like Chubb said. Always remember Chubb's words. It's like the course knew that I need to pick me up after the atrocity that was the green on the last hole. And so here we are. Two holes to go, three over, easy par five. Oh my God. Easy par five? Really? Really? I have the audacity to think for a split second that anything in golf is easy and it goes straight into the freeway. If you're watching this and I accidentally hit your windshield, I'm sorry. I feel like I would have heard about it by now, but still. Anyways, three off the tee. Scoring opportunity completely over. Doesn't mean anything. This whole round is crumbling in my hands as I'm trying to desperately and hopelessly keep it alive. As I hit another wood off the heel. I'm losing my mind. I want to go home. I'm making a fool of myself. I'm not any better than I was two years ago. Okay, maybe I am. I used to not be able to hit those kind of tweener pitch shots. Probably about five feet. That's a must make though. It really is. It's just absolutely heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. And, um,. It's crazy when you think after the hole's all said and done, you wish you could go back and just bunt eight irons all the way up. Well, and the cherry on the top, after, or in my uh, case, the nail on top, the nail on the coffin. I ate a bowl of nails for breakfast without any milk. Those are the kinds of shots you hit when that's your diet. <laughs> And part of it, you can just see in my posture, guys, I've just lost a lot of care and a lot of attention for this round. And um, in hindsight, I should not have done that, especially staring down a relatively easy hole. The 18th here at the Emerald is a 360 par 4 wide open tee shot. I mishit this pretty bad. I hit it off the heel again. Just not getting that timing right when pulling my body up. And um, I actually thought after that miss on, with a four-footer on hole 16, I actually thought I was six over because I thought it was a bogey, but I was wrong. It was actually a par. I mean, obviously, after a nice tee shot like that. And then this approach shot, like I was saying before, uh, alluding to a past round, uh, there's water to the front and to the right. And even though I chunked it about the distance where it would mean I went straight into the water, I actually, uh, turned it over enough. So we're okay. We've got a chance for an up and down here, get in with a par, get in with a 41 plus five, which on 141 slope course is not too shabby at all. And um, stepping over this putt, I'm thinking, I've made a couple good ones today. Let's make this another one I can add to that list. And um, I did a really good job of um, 
kind of settling myself over this, knowing the situation. If this goes in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pack it in. I'm gonna retire if he holds this. When we desperately needed to fall to keep that score alive, I just have somehow, not just then, but all many, many times this year, more often than not, been able to put a great stroke on it and have it go in. It's awesome when um, I'm able to do that. So overall, not a bad nine holes, uh, 41 uh, on a 141 slope course, like I was saying earlier. This course's slope rating is the hardest that I've ever faced on this channel. Um, maybe uh, stroke rating as well. It's a 72.8. I feel like I've played some courses even tougher than that. Yeah, Sylvan Glen. Sylvan Glen's a 73.4, and I shot a 75 on video one time. That was awesome. Um, but yeah, this is up there in that regard too. I think top three. Uh, so easily one of the toughest tests that I've ever had on this channel. And uh, I think I held my own. I, I do. Um, I think uh, the uh, immediate response after the 16's miss wasn't there. But the par on 18 after two pretty bad shots back to back, the tee shot and the approach shot. Um, I was able to recover with a good up and down. And uh, that's what matters is. Uh, always recovering, always kind of staying in the hunt, which I was able to do. And I think with a lot of the shots I hit on this nine that you guys just saw, we have got a serious chance at um, at least getting our p personal best, if not a 70s round. Personal best for this course, I mean. Uh, and like I said, I've played here three times. The early season I played here, I shot an 82. Uh about three weeks before this, I shot an 85, and actually the day before this uh, round was recorded, I went to the Emerald and shot an 85. So, um, yeah, guys, it is a tough course, and uh, 85 is still a single-digit differential with my handicap. That's how tough this course is. But um, to be the best, you got to beat the best. To get better at golf, you got to prove to yourself that you can handle courses like this instead of just playing uh, 60, 100 yard wide open courses, um, and just hyping yourself up, getting seventies all the time. Hey, I'm such a good golfer. Yeah. Come out to a course like this and try it out. Yeah. I guarantee you, you will get your butt kicked. Um, or at least probably, but, uh, luckily not the case today. Um, with a 41, we need a 38 or better on the back to shoot in the seventies. We need a 40 or better on the back to shoot the personal best round on a course like this. Um, and uh, we can definitely do it. I, I had a lot of things going right for me on that front. I did. And I look forward to posting that for you guys. I'm so glad I was able to get this round out. This is one of my favorite courses. I intend fully on going back and doing another 18-hole vlog here, possibly like a challenge uh, in the college matches, I might find somebody from Central or Michigan State to do it with. I'd love to do it here. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much all she wrote for now, guys. This is Buffalo Ben 15 signing off. Have a good day, everyone.